Hey everyone, and welcome back to AGT Time. Cody Patterson here along with... Along with Jay Bach. We are on episode 5 of season 3 of our rewatch. Uh, ready to do another deep dive, ready to talk about uh, a, a, about some more acts. Uh, yeah, so this is Auditions 5 of 7. 7 auditions, Jay. Seven, seven. Only, only 7, so, which is less than 8. Yeah, not 8. Yes. It's not. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what are you kind of, what are you kind of thinking of the episodes at this point? I mean, um, has the quality kind of kept up or, you know, it's interesting. Uh, it's a different pace than what we've seen in the recent seasons. Uh, okay. you know, and, and the way that I, the way that I sit down to watch these is I'll go out to the, uh, the AGT wiki and I, copy and paste all the acts into my document and then i um the, the way that they're sorted out they've got the acts going through and then the acts that are eliminated in in two separate chunks and then i kind of shuffle them together into the correct order and so you know at, when we're getting down to the last you know 25 minutes of the episode it's like man there's only one or two more acts going through and all this time left you know it's like how did it's just a different pace with uh, with the uh, amount of of acts that they have going through, or, or the way that they allot the time. It, it I guess it does feel that way because it's it's like we'll start off with a bad act, then we'll uh, we'll kind of get into a couple of good ones, then we go into a montage, and then. Uh, but I don't feel like we've we've gotten the quality that we did in the first two episodes where we had Neely Boyd, um, and we had. Uh, what's his name from the second episode? Uh, shoot. Anyway, so like the yeah. you're saying the the quality of the actual performance performances. Yes, right? I feel like, like the the quality of the actual um uh, the quality of the actual performances I feel has not not been uh, high like it was in the first two episodes. Yeah, uh, I think you're thinking of Eli Matson there. I uh, am thinking of Eli Matson. Okay. Thank you. Uh, flat caps for the win. Um, that's right. <laughs> uh, no flat caps this week. No, uh, it's kind of a, a swing and a miss. Maybe that's why this felt a little off. We, we didn't have the that's right. Uh, no flat caps. We, we didn't have the the James crew. We didn't have uh, James Matson or Eli Matson or Neely Boy. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the whole thing is just everything's off. We need <laughs> bring back the flat caps. <laughs> uh, no, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, and. You know, I, I don't know if somehow they accidentally put all their best acts early on in the season, or if that was maybe more intentional, or um, or what. But yeah, it definitely feels like there's a, a drop-off from the uh, very best acts uh, that we saw those episodes to the very best acts we're seeing this episode. Yeah. Um, and I guess, Sorry, you know, I'm... Uh... I'm I'm, adjust, I'm adjusting my uh, setup here. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> uh, we we can talk about you know when we get to the end of this you know who is you know our personal golden buzzer our our personal best act of the night uh, who do we want to see more of or or who uh, maybe got the shaft um, and and I, I guess we'll get there after we go through the acts. Um, it's worth noting that I had a little bit of a struggle trying to find this particular episode. Uh, all these season three episodes are on YouTube, but the actual this actual episode appears to be blocked for um, copyright reasons. Maybe <laughs> so. If it seems weird because we have we have twenty something episodes with all kinds of singing and music performances, and this one this one gets blocked. Yeah, for some reason. So if you're having trouble seeing this, uh, reach out to us, and we'll see if we can point you to the right direction on on where to find it. Uh, and I'll parlay that into saying you can find us <laughs> on uh, Twitter at AGT Time or uh, Instagram or uh, our YouTube channel. Is, I guess I'm sorry, I should say that correctly. It's at AGT Time Pod uh, for Twitter, for Instagram, for Facebook, for YouTube. <coughs> oh, bless me. Bless Jeez. you. Ah. That one, I, I felt that coming on for about 15 seconds there. And I was trying to decide if I was going to sneeze or not. So, <laughs> um, 
uh, that's that's where you find us, AGT Time Pod. If you want to reach out to Cody directly, it's at Cody L. Patterson, or on uh, Twitter, I am at One Man Bander, and uh, we try to keep you guys up to date on all the uh, AGT news. With that, Cody, <laughs> you ready to uh, talk episode five? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm a little off my game tonight, Jay. I'm not sure why. I'm adjusting. I, I got a new camera, and I'm kind of uh, adjusting it on the fly. So, oh, all right. I feel like okay. I'm a little off. I should have been more prepared for this tonight, and I'm, <laughs> I'm off my game. But uh, I'm, I'm focused now. I'm ready to go. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. America's Got Talent, season three, episode five. We're going back to Atlanta. Wait, wait, wait. We're we're supposed to watch episode five? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're going back to Atlanta. Uh, because they're yeah, just jet going, setting all I, over the place. Again, we're going back to Atlanta again. Relanta, re back to Relanta. So, so this is our third episode where we've had where we've been in Atlanta. Yeah, and I suspect that they like are moving these out of actual chronological order, right? I bet they were in Atlanta yes. for a couple of days, and they were in Chicago for a couple of days, and they were in New York for a couple of days, and then edited together however they wanted. So that's my that's my guess. Uh, yeah, but, that would make sense. All right, let's start off here in Atlanta. We've got Michelle Wallace. She's a 29 year old banker, uh, but that's not her talent that she's going to share with us. Uh, she she has dreams of being a professional singer. And uh, the music starts. She's going to sing all by myself. And as it's leading up, she's like, everybody, get on your feet. Wave your hands with me. Get on your feet, everybody. And uh, then she starts to sing. And it was awful. Uh, she <laughs> promptly gets three X's. <laughs> uh, she, um, Sharon said, have you ever recorded your voice and listened to it? And she said, no. And uh, says, you might want to try that. And so it's three X's for Michelle Wallace. She's not going through. Um, I feel that we feel that we've had. I feel that we've had Sharon ask someone this before. Maybe she did it in season two. Uh, someone it saying kind of feel awfully, familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. I think someone saying awfully, and she said, "Hey, have, have have you recorded yourself?" And they're like, "No," and she's like, "You should." <laughs> uh, so it's it's something I guess you know. Sharon's Sharon's very used to. Uh, she was she was getting like, yeah, everyone stand up, put your hands together, let's get all excited. I was expecting some big like pop song or R and B song, and no, she sings all by myself. So, <laughs> read read the room, Michelle. Read the room. It's like you're getting them all excited. Don't don't sing this song. Yeah. Uh, and yes, uh, sings it is maybe a, a strong word to use. She she screeches it. Well, yells it. Yeah. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, the audience was just going nuts, you know, the, the X and boo and get her <laughs> off, but she kept going. She, she didn't waver. No. She, she plowed through the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Her, her passion was there, right? Her, her desire was yes. there, but, um, yes, it did not translate into, uh, actual, uh, good performance. So, yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the second act of the night. Then we've got Bruce block. That's right. Bruce was on season two of America's Got Talent. Yes. And uh, if you recall, he was the one you I, I really loved his audition act. He trained the rabbit. I love his audition. And uh, yes. And he quote unquote talked into the microphone. Uh, and it was really funny. Uh, it was it was good, uh, clean comedy uh, straight up. But, you know, the the rabbit talking about. Uh, you know, the ethical treatment of rabbits in, in the magis mag magician world. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, I've got my wife and my 90 kids to take care of and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it was very funny. And then in his Vegas round in season two, his assistant quit on him and he had to pivot from doing his bed of nails trick to uh, doing what he called pulling a rabbi out of a hat which was not a good magic trick, and he was promptly eliminated from season two. So he's back for season three. We're finally going to get to see this bed of nails trick while his, has, while his assistant sings Anything Goes and tap dances. And eventually we'll see that she tap dances not just on the ground while she sings, but she's going to 
uh, have Bruce hold a board over his uh, over his torso, and she's going to tap dance on that board. Uh, what do you think of the performance? Uh, I I kind of like this. I really liked his. You know, I loved his season two audition per- performance the best. Uh, it was so great, so creative, uh, so imaginative. Uh, it was a shame that he had to pivot and in in uh, the Vegas round and and do the act that he did. Uh, I, I feel real bad for him on that. But he he came back. Uh, he brought the assistant out this time. Did this did the trick. This is the trick that he was planning on doing that time. That's what I understand. Yes. Okay. Okay. So came back, did this trick. Uh, we've seen people do the bed of nails thing. Uh, you know, it was really cool, I guess, when we were kids, but we kind of know, you know, how the bed of nails things works today. So it's not that impressive. It's still kind of cool to see someone lay on a bed of nails, but it's not that impressive when you kind of understand the physics behind it. Right. Uh, the, uh, the assistant, I think he probably could have done this trick without the assistant. I don't know if he really needed the assistant. I don't think anything goes really added much to the act. It would have been a pretty slow performance if he laid on the bed of nails and then stood up and took a bow. No, but he could have brought a judge up. He could have brought Jerry on the stage. He probably could have brought a volunteer and like just foregone the anything goes. Like the anything goes could have been gone. <laughs> and uh he could have had someone just stand on the stand on his chest and like you know walk around or maybe just bounce up and down you know give him some instruction on something to do okay uh, uh well, I, I don't think the song and her dancing really added anything to it she tap danced on him while he laid on the bed of nails and I, yes. so i feel like the tap dancing is a really nice touch that's that's good flair okay uh okay i, I also think like She's not hard to look at, so you know there's eh, that all appeal. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, she, what was she wearing? Like a sailor outfit yeah. with with a skirt, yeah. mini skirt, cute little skirt and tap shoes, kind yeah, of in American like patriotic. Nineteen forty, yeah, nineteen forties, yeah, yeah. World War Two era. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it was cute. Um, the thing that strikes me about about Bruce Block is his range man like we've seen okay. comedy like really good comedy with yep. the rabbit we saw yep. magic eh, i mean questionably good magic Mag- but magic yeah and yeah and now we get the bed of nails like those are three very different kinds of acts uh three very okay. different kinds of performances uh from from bruce block so uh, dude's got range i i can say that much <sighs> Okay, yeah, I, I could go with that. I did like also that like that the Hoff came on stage. He wanted to really test it out as well and yeah, see. Yeah, at the end of his hey, performance, are those nails actually? <laughs> uh, at the end of his performance, Hoff did say, you know, can I see your back? And he showed him his back, and then he uh, asked if he could be the one to stand on him while he lays on the bed of nails. So Bruce lays back down on the bed of nails, and Hoff uh, goes and he stands on top of that board on top of Bruce. Um, uh, which you know, Hoff, a little bit bigger than his assistant. <laughs> yes, yeah, he probably got a hundred pounds on her. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. a good guess. Um, Sharon ended up. She said, "I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not sure it's right for us." Uh, Pierce said, "The real criteria for me is would I pay good money to watch you perform for ninety minutes? And there's something entertaining about this, but I'm not sure." Uh, Hoff said, "Those nails are real, and you're incredible." And you don't give up. Uh, so it's a no from Pierce, but yes from Hoff, and ultimately a yes from Sharon. Bruce Block is going to Vegas. Um, I, I enjoyed this uh, enough. I, I feel like, you know, two out of three judges giving him the thumbs up is about is about right. Yeah. If he could have incorporated, you know, some of his, his comedy or, uh, you know, getting that rabbit on stage somehow or, or something else, you know, if he, um, was, was danger act plus, uh, that's a pretty good spot to be, but you know, like I know that that's there. So that's, that's encouraging. Yeah. I want him to bring the comedy back. I like the comedy much, much more. Fair enough. Uh, all right. So that's Bruce block. We've, we've got one eliminated act, one going through, and now we've got 
Dore Saunders. <laughs> uh, she calls herself a uh, Tina Turner impersonator. Uh, she's 37 years old. Dore's going to lip sync and dance. And you know how I feel about lip syncing on the stage. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and I think Pierce feels the same way. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think that that's a very good talent. Um, right. But uh, I tell you what, she gets up there and she's actually a pretty darn good lip syncer. Uh, she's got all the Tina Turner moves, right? She's got the, the hip shakes and the, uh, the like really quick running in place. Like you're on a Nintendo power pad. Uh, she's... <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a throwback. That's the kids. That's the, uh, the old version of the dance dance revolution. <laughs> uh, I, I thought you'd like that. Uh, the, yeah. The Nintendo power pack where, where you have to run in place as fast as you can to beat the cheetah runner. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then she does the, the, the high snap and the, the low snap. Uh, yep. you know, she, she's got all the Tina Turner. She's got them down. Uh, it, it's pretty entertaining. And if I can say like, are you a good Tina Turner impersonator? It, it's absolutely. Yes. She's very good. Um, is this something that I would pay to see? I don't know. Like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little, little unclear, right? If if it was a, a Tina Turner impersonator and a Michael Jackson impersonator and a you name them, Bruno Mars impersonator, I don't know. Like you probably have to go with better dancers more than singers. But like you get some of like like a whole show of impersonators, like that could be pretty fun. Right, people who really uh, can can play the part, people who really look like those uh, those musicians um, dancing like them, that'd be a really fun stage show. Um, and yeah, I yeah I could I could go with that. I could see where that would be a really good stage show. I don't I don't think this is great as a solo act. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's that's the problem. Is it's she's treating it like a solo act, but. Um, yeah, uh, Hoff said, you were very entertaining, but I don't know if I can vote you through. Sharon said, what can I say? I love you. And Pierce said, I'm not sure if we should put somebody through who lip syncs over another act. And this right. is where, where her rebuttal comes in. She says, I'm not a singer. <laughs> You're right. But I am an yeah. incredible dancer and an actress, and I'll do whatever it takes. And I kind of like that that attitude of, like, no, I'm not a singer. I'm a dancer. And you saw me dance, and I'm pretty darn good at it. <laughs> um, that's that's a good response. Uh, so Pierce ultimately yeah. is going to give her the no. Uh, Sharon, of course, is a yes, and Hoff hems and haws, and uh, you know was entertaining enough for him, so he's going to put her through. And that's two out of three. So Dore Saunders, our Tina Turner impersonator, is going through to the Vegas act, the Vegas uh, round. I, I I don't I don't see much from this. It's. <sighs> Can it win? Maybe not. No. Uh, uh, no. It's, it's a flat out no. It can't win. But if this is the, uh, it, you know, the exposure to, you know, finding a Michael Jackson impersonator or uh, a Prince impersonator, I don't know who you would want. But yeah, uh, Michael Jackson <clears throat> is the only one that really comes to mind. Uh, yeah. Somebody who's who's a dancer as much as they are a performer uh, or a singer. Um but um you know i i like the idea of that stage show a lot uh i yeah. i could see that you know being a really big hit so let me let me ask you a question jay why do lip syncers need microphones uh to hide their lips <laughs> <laughs> the same way a lot of uh ventriloquists uh they'll stand behind a microphone and kind of you know hide their face behind it as they're as they're talking, <laughs> but that works better if you're watching the video of me hiding my face behind my microphone. I'll yes. say that, but um, uh, yeah, I guess um, uh, it's fine. Two out of three feels like another like appropriately, uh, you know, you, you snuck through to the Vegas round. That's good enough. Yeah, yeah the audience was really into it. Uh, yes, they were, and. Yeah, there, there's an energy that she brings. And if I think of her as a dancer, as an entertainer, not as a singer or, you know, a, as a, 
even as an impersonator, right? If I think of her as a dancer, she's a pretty good dancer. It's not bad. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with that. So, uh, all right, let's move on. We've got, uh, I, I think we're going to get into a montage here of a montage yes. of yeses, actually. Okay. Uh, Tropidanza, an acrobatic samba group, uh, looked to me like there was one dude who was like doing flips across the stage while there were eight ladies in bikinis and giant, you know, samba feathers dancing behind him. Um, thoughts on Tropidanza? Would Tropidanza be much better if it had the actor Tony Danza? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then you'd get people who are like, oh, he's too famous to be on AGT. Kick him out. No, no they, good. Boo. They'd be like, in, or, or which one's the boss? <laughs> Who's the boss up there? Uh, all right. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, we're going to montage through Fast Wally. He's a juggler, uh, 43 like years that. old. Uh, he juggles pins very fast. Uh, then he yes. throws one up, does a somersault, and catches it. Um, fast Wally, thoughts? Uh, I liked it. I, from the five seconds we saw, I really liked it. Okay. Uh, we yeah. got a glimpse of Brian Cheatham, a uh, 30-year-old exotic dancer, uh, singing and dancing to Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. Um, uh, he sang hard, loud. Um, he can sing well enough. Uh, he's clearly a very attractive man. Um Dude's got a lot going for him, right? Not surprised to see him going through. Yep. Uh, thoughts on Brian Chatham? The the only thing I think it's Cheatham. Okay. Because the only thing that I could think of, the only thing I could think of when he when they said his name was uh, you, if you remember the the radio show Car Talk. Yes. Uh, Dewey Cheatham and ha Dewey Cheatham and How. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the end of Car Talk, they they've got their whole list of uh, you know all their uh, uh, you know our. our Russian chauffeurs peek off and drop off and all their, uh, you know, our, our, our child care, uh, expert Erasmus B dragon and all their, yeah, all, all those fun names. So, uh, I think that was the, uh, the, the law offices of Dewey, Cheatham and how. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, Brian Cheatham, um, he's going through good enough. Okay. Sweet. Uh, all right. We're going to move on. We've got the Superstars uh, mascot dance group. Uh, they're going to dance to the song Tootsie Roll. I'm going to guess this is, is not on the Cody Patterson playlist. I I don't think so, but I'm very familiar with Tootsie Roll. Yeah. How could you not be? It's like yeah, true. Part yeah. of the zeitgeist, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. But we've got, uh, what is it, five five dudes in inflatable costumes? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. From the wiki, it says the Zooperstars began with 30 shows in 1998. They jumped to 85 shows in 1999. And currently, the Zooperstars perform at more than 200 shows a year. Uh, their success can be contributed to the uniqueness of the costumes and the character name. Uh, they flip, they bounce, they shake, they dance, and they just flat out jam. Then here's, here's where the real information comes in. It says whether they're wildly dancing on a court creating havoc on top of a dugout, sliding silly around the ice, or mingling with the audience, the superstars aim to command any crowd's undivided attention. So it sounds like these guys go to basketball games, hockey games, yeah. uh, you know, baseball games, wherever. Yeah, we, we, yeah when, when you said 200 shows, my first thought was they must be on the basketball, hockey, and baseball circuit. <laughs> uh, I, I'm curious how many times they've made their way to Des Moines the uh you know america's greatest well, minor might, league city you know i bet that they'll go to the field of dreams now well you know that might cheapen that experience uh that's <laughs> that's a that's a once a once a year uh thing that they're they're planning to do but yes um you know you, you, you don't you don't think for the uh the wonderment that is the field of dreams that they'll bring the superstars i don't i don't <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, you know, they, they started in 98 and the field of dreams was what? 88, maybe must've been it was a yeah. little before, 
a little before the Zuber stars uh, were around. So, uh, but you know, we've got the uh, the Triple A uh, feeder to the the Cubs. We've got the Iowa Cubs. We've got the uh, hockey that you know is the the level below uh, the I- uh, the Minnesota Wild. We've got the Iowa Wild. Uh, you know, we've got we've got minor league teams like crazy around here. Um, yeah. So it feels and like if a, you have and if you have the I if you have the Iowa Cubs that fits right in because they had Harry Carey. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, um, yeah. So uh, if I have an opportunity, if I, if I know that they're coming to town, I still probably won't make an effort to go see them. <laughs> <laughs> they might show up at the Iowa State Fair. Uh, you know, it's it's more than possible. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I didn't hate this. Like, it was silly and fun. Yeah. But yeah. I cannot imagine this for 90 minutes. Like, if that's Pierce's criteria, like, no, no way, man. No, this is at this is max 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and you better have kids along who are really enjoying it. If I'm going to sit through 15 minutes yes. of this. Yes. Uh, Field of Dreams, 1989. So you're you're real close. Oh, that, that's not a bad guess. All right. Yep. Um. All right. Well, we're done in Atlanta. Superstars, congratulations! Real, you're going through. Did real quick on uh, Superstars. Yeah. Well, real quick on Superstars. For some reason, I mean, I, I checked. I thought they came back later, like in another season, because for some reason the Superstars just are like burned in my brain, and I'm not sure why. Okay. But they must be burned in my brain from season three. It must be. They, yeah. They've got some, some sticking power. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the, we're going to see them longer than I expected to. I'll say that much. I know. I, I looked at that. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that. Um, okay. We're, we're done with Atlanta. We're going back to Fort Worth. I mean, Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> But that has pictures of the stockyards, which is not Dallas. It's not Dallas. Gosh darn it! Uh, I'm going to go off on my rant again, Jay. No, let's, you, you've done it. Listen to the last episode if you want to hear it. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> all right, uh, we're we're back to Dallas. We're going with the Dallas Desperados, a cheerleader dance group. Uh, all women ages 18 to 26 years old. Everyone has perfect white teeth. They wear uh, bikinis <laughs> and chaps, and uh, they've got pom poms. Um, it, you know, they start dancing. They are clearly some very accomplished dancers, uh, very in sync, better than, you know, the average dance group that we see on America's Got Talent, uh, dancing to a song called Hey Baby. Um, but I can't say that they did any one move that makes them stand out, right? I usually try to, to get that down, to write it out. And it was just like, nope, they danced. They, they danced pretty darn good. Um, so ultimately, for me, kind of forgettable. Uh, what do you think of the Dallas Desperados? So the Dallas Desperado dancers are actual dancers for the uh, now defunct Arena League football team, Dallas Desperados. Okay. So they're already uh, a paid professional dance team. All right. Working for another organization. <laughs> so I'm I I don't feel that this belongs here, and I think we've seen other acts. Similar, we saw what the uh, Emerald Bells high school yeah. uh, high kick team. Um, we've seen them, and I think I kind of went off on the same thing that it's it's real difficult that if this were if this group type of group were to win, you know how do they how do they do a Vegas show when they've already got these other commitments that they are supposed to be doing? Uh, you're you're right that they don't have anything that really makes them stick out there kind of very similar moves from all other dance crews for sporting for sporting te- for sport yep. teams for 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 sports teams <laughs> uh wow i sound like uh i don't know what i'm talking about uh on uh, sports here sports is good uh, <laughs> sports is good i like sports uh so you know you have the Dallas Desperados you got the Dallas Mavericks have their own dance team of course, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, one of the most famous cheerleading t- groups in the in the entire world. They all kind of do very similar moves. Um, so you've got to do something that kind of makes you stick out, and they're they're just not going to do that. So, like, I can't imagine that the D- 
Dallas Desperados indoor football team has the budget to employ these women full time? Like, th- no, this is not their their day job. This is a, no, 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 something no. they do on the side for fun. Correct, and it's it's very similar to other, even like the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. They're not they're professional. They do get paid, but it's not their full time job. They have full time jobs. And then they do this on the evenings and on the weekends. Right. Um, yep. So they're not that good, right? They're not the, the Rockettes <laughs> or like this isn't their... Uh, well, even I'm sure even the Rockettes, that's not their full-time job. I'm sure they have uh, other jobs. Yeah, but what I, I'm saying... I guess I don't know. And, and so these... <laughs> I hate to say it. The Dallas Desperados were probably... They probably tried out for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders <laughs> the and didn't offs. make the squad. I, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say they probably tried out and they didn't make it. So they went and became Dallas Desperados. They're the, so. they're the, the uh, IFL version of the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Quite well, a- AFL, are, 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 Arena League. Arena yeah. football. Okay. Arena not, League football. League, okay. Yeah. Not, I think not you, indoor. Arena League. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to remember the uh, Des Moines football team, uh, the Des Moines indoor football team. Uh, okay. is the Barnstormers. And over okay. the years, like they've they've come and gone, and it's been Arena League and Arena League 2 yep. and Indoor Football League yep. and like just all, all these different leagues of Indoor Football Leagues. And yep. I don't know. They're, <laughs> is, is one <laughs> really better than the other, or are they all just, uh, you know, they're all something short of the NFL. Right. Well, it's just different and kind of just side step here. We'll kind of give a quick uh, biography on arena. Their field is smaller. It's only 50 yards mm-hmm. uh, instead of the full hundred. Uh, the, there's really no out of bounds. Uh, the out of bounds is a more limited scoring is way higher. Uh, so, yeah. And I think it's like six on six rather than a, or nine on they're smaller teams. Yeah. And I think most players play offense and defense. Oh, uh, wow. So it's kind of, kind of some interesting facts about the arena league. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Warner uh, so. played for the Iowa Barnstormers. That's right. And was uh, That's right. begging groceries for, uh, for high V when <laughs> yeah. he uh, somehow was discovered and made his way to the NFL and uh, ultimately to a Super Bowl title. Uh, so, yes. Um, it can be done, but I'm pretty sure that's the exception. <laughs> yes. <laughs> most most arena players don't um, don't make it to the NFL, and most of them don't win the <laughs> the Super Bowl. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to see much more from the Dallas. I mean, we're we got three yeses. I would be surprised if we saw much more from the Dallas Desperados. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, so let's move on then. We've got exclusive. He's a uh, a dancer, uh, Kenneth Pay- Pario. Pario. Uh, he's 18 years old. Um, he does a robotic dance, and I almost want to put dance in quotation marks because it's almost like a, a mime routine instead of a dance. Uh, okay. But he has like a, a soundtrack that he moves to. It's like the sound of, of servos. It, it's almost like a, a Michael, like if Michael Winslow were yeah. to dance. <laughs> Michael Winslow is to robot noises what exclusive is to <laughs> robot moves. Yes. Um, uh, uh, all that to say, like, he's pretty darn good at it. Um, yeah. You know, it, I, I really did enjoy his mime skills, right? His robotic moves. Uh, it, nothing that really stood out to me as like, you know, boy, he did that move that I just didn't see coming or, you know, wow, I've never seen anybody do that before. He was just very, very clean. Yes. And crisp, very clean, crisp, but nothing. Yeah. You're like, no, wow. I did write down and, and after, you know, watching it, I probably shouldn't, but I wrote down Kenichi before Kenichi. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Kenichi, but not as good. (laughs) Yes, because I was waiting for him to kind of do the you know Kenichi move. Yeah, where's the uh, wow? He rises up from his right, and we didn't get that. But he was kind of very clean and crisp, just like Kenichi is. Yeah, 
Uh, Sharon said the track that you danced to was unbelievable and uh, asked the, if he... was the Jeopardy thing song. Did that himself. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, Pierce said, I didn't expect much, but I was very... Uh, but it was very unusual and clearly a real talent. The question is, what would you do if you came back? And he said, I have a load of other routines. Uh, Pierce said, you could put together a whole show of dancers doing this for an hour in Vegas. I would watch it. Uh, three yeses from the judges. And then he like sideways moonwalks off the stage. So uh, that was exclusive. I I enjoyed it well enough. Um, I, he, he lacked the wow, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, I I could see this guy making a lot of TikTok videos today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That that seems like the perfect place for him. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, All right, let's move on. We've got Barry Collier. He's an animal impressionist, a 56-year-old warehouse worker. Um, And he comes on the stage and he says, I'm going to do barnyard animal noises. Uh, He said, how'd you get into doing this? And he says, when I was a child, I'd go into my closet and I'd make noises. Um and then he proceeds to read from a note card. Uh, the first yes. sound I'm going to do <laughs> is a chicken. And then he makes a chicken noise, which isn't bad. Uh, and then yeah. he reads from his note card. The next sound I'm going to do is a hound dog. And then he makes a hound dog noise. And then he says, the next sound I'm going to do is a coyote. And again, it's not bad. And at this point, Pierce is um, kind of uh, kind of done. And he says, yes, uh, very, very. <laughs> I don't know how many more you got. Pick the next, your your best one, and let's leave it at that. And he says, I'm going to do the sound of a Rottweiler and a wild hog having a disagreement. And then he makes a, you know, <laughs> I think pretty accurate representation of what that might sound like. Um, yeah. Barry lacks maybe some charisma. Yes. Um, so, two, two, two big thoughts. Don't don't have the check. Don't have the piece of paper in your hand. If you don't know what which ones you're going to do when you get out there, you don't need to be out there. Uh, two, you you should never have to tell us what the impression is. If you're an impressionist and you have to tell us what it is, then that's an automatic strike for me. Yes, uh, I I often a lot of impressionists will you yeah. know uh, come on stage and it's uh you know like. Hey, I'm George W. Bush. You know, I was like, well, yeah. I, uh, I guess if you say that, I can see it. But like, yeah, at, at, at minimum, like, let the material tell us who you right. are. Right. Like, yes. You know. Give give us some context. Don't actually tell us who you are, but give us context. Yeah. Boy, that was some yeah. good years in the White House from 1990. <laughs> Give us the. Hey, remember that time I was reading books at uh, at the school? I don't know who that was. And then that bad thing happened in New oh. York. Oh, geez, that's dark, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> that is dark. I know. All right. Uh, so, um, it, his impressions were fine. His delivery was yeah. just less than desirable. Uh, Hoff said, "I can imagine your parents coming home to you doing this in your closet." Uh, Pierce said, I'm not sure if it's worth a million dollars. I'm not sure that you can make it to a dollar. Uh, so it's going to be three <laughs> no's from the judges, and uh, Barry's been eliminated. All right, let's talk about Nancy Upchurch. Uh, she's a 53-year-old singer, and uh, she says, people tell me they get the chills and cry when I sing. Um she sings a song that I did not recognize and did not like. Uh, at the end, she went up in a, like the Mariah Carey range. I believe it's what they call a, a whistle range, which is just ridiculously high. Um, and that was that was her her hook was that high range. And uh, we don't hear any judges' comments. We just know that she's eliminated. All right, and then we okay. move on to the freak <laughs> show. Uh, Twenty-one to twenty-three year old dancers. Um, they weren't great. And Sharon said, this is not worth a million dollars and they've been eliminated. Okay. And then we go to a, a group called, uh, or I should say a duo called music makes the world go round a 44 and 49 year old husband and wife accordion duo. And I loved it. <laughs> they, okay. 
here are my here's my two quick thoughts. Okay. A, the name of their group's too long. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> the name of the group's too long. That, that's a very B, that's that's a like of all the problems you could have, like <laughs> that that's so far down the list. But go on, let's hear it. No, no, no. You gotta have you gotta have a name that's a little more you know get a little shorter. It's it's, it's too much. Something like it's, 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 Polka today. That's exactly that was where I was going next. Is should they hook up with the polka dancing? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, they would be the the four of them would be great together. And yes, absolutely. Yes, 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 and yes. Um, you know, I, I enjoy any instrument played very, very well, and okay. we've got two really good accordion players on the stage. Mm -hmm. um, Pierce tells us uh, if there's one thing worse than an accordion, it's two accordions. Um, <laughs> but I think He's that's British. She doesn't understand the accordion. That is blatantly false. Uh, I want to see more of music makes the world go round. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, on the wiki, it says Dan and Kim met while Dan was taking lessons from Kim's father, and they have taken this accordion act and they have played. You'll love this at such prestigious places places as Disneyland and Disney World. There you go. So, okay. Well, that's not surprising. There is, you know, there is a uh, German pavilion mm -hmm. at, at Epcot, so that would that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, let me guess. Are they from Wisconsin? I do or not does know. It say? Uh, okay. I, I didn't get that. Um, all right. I I enjoyed music makes the world go round. I'm sorry that, that Pierce and the other judges didn't enough to get them through. So, um, yeah, they need to shorten the name, too. <laughs> <Meh. laughs> uh, would you rather they, they go by the initials MMTWGR? Uh, yeah, we can go with that. All That'd right. be good. Okay, that, there we go. All right. We, we've solved all your problems. MMTWGR <laughs> is... A really good accordion duo. Uh, or what? What was their names again? What was their names again? Uh, I've got um, Ke uh, Dan and Kim. Dan and Kim. Let's just go with that. You think that's better than M M T W G R? Uh, yeah, Dan and Kim. We'll go with that. <laughs> D D D and K. Okay. All right. Fine. It, it doesn't matter. They're not going through. That's that's all we get oh, okay. anyhow. All right. Let's move on to Mac J. He's a dancer, thirty-two years old. Uh, he didn't do anything interesting. He got eliminated. Okay. And then we go to Fancy Ray <laughs> McCloney. Uh, he calls himself a little Richard impersonator. Uh, tells us over and over, "I'm the best looking man in comedy." Um. In the wiki, it tells us that he's a combination between the personalities of Prince, James Brown, and Little Richard. Okay. okay. Is he the one that said he's too good for this show? Yep. The best yep. looking okay. man in comedy, he's too good for this show. <laughs> so he gets eliminated. Uh, and let's move on, finally, to Donald Braswell II. Uh, he's listed as an opera singer. Uh, Braswell was on the fast track to become a internationally acclaimed opera singer when freak car accident in 1995, uh, like made him unable to speak for almost two years, uh, damaged his vocal cords, leaving doctors telling him he would never be able to pursue a career, uh, in music, uh, at least not as a singer. Um, so he's going to sing Josh Groban's You Raise Me Up. Not an easy song to sing. Um, right. And I'm not 100% sure why the crowd was so against him at first. But they right. They were really booing him and uh, indicating that he should be X with their with their arms above their heads. Um, I, I don't know. Like, you know, it felt maybe like a little bit hokey at first. But uh, then he, he pulls what I like to call... The Barry Manilow. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. The key change, right? <laughs> yes. He, yes. He pulls the key change in the, uh, you know, halfway through, you raise me up. And the crowd is like, oh, this key I can get behind. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I was like, I went too big in the key of C, <laughs> but if we switch to the key of G, boy. Well, it's like C G to C good. sharp or G to yeah. G sharp or whatever it was. Yeah. I don't know. From yeah, whatever. Yeah. B flat to B. Ooh, B. <laughs> I'd never considered singing the song in B, but so all that to say, once he changed the key, the crowd really just changed their tune and they got behind him. And uh, they were they were sending sent, saying saying sent him to Vegas. Um, uh, it was the biggest shift we've seen in audience uh, attention that that I've ever yeah. do, do, recall. Do you think the show was? Do you think the show was pulling one over on us? I'm not sure if it was edited that way. It sure felt pretty pretty realistic. Okay, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah, Hoff said, I want to say, at first, this crowd was yelling to get you off, and now they're yelling Vegas. Pierce said, uh, to get an audience to come with you uh, takes emotion, and I can tell what it means to you. Sharon, Sharon said, your voice is magnificent, and you have a, a beautiful tone. And uh, so, there you go. Three yeses from the judges. Donald Braswell the second, he's going to Vegas, and we're going to see more of him. We're going to see more of him. Yes. So, so far we've got three really good singers. Yeah. Yeah, I would say uh, between Eli, yep. Neely Boyd, and Donald Braswell II. Uh, yep. Donald, unfortunately, missing the flat cap. <laughs> could, he, could he pull off the flat cap? Uh, let me look at his picture. I don't know if it... it, it I don't have know if it would any, suit him. Yeah, he's got kind of a, a long face. But, yeah. Uh, High cheekbones. I'm not sure. We'd have to see it. But he I could. I, I bet he. I bet he could rock the tux, though. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure of that. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Donald Braswell II. Not a bad way to end the night. And that is. Uh, that's it for episode five of season three. Uh, Cody, who is your golden buzzer? Who is the the act that you? Would uh, would automatically put through to the the live rounds. I it has to be Donald Braswell. It has to be right. I mean that's fine. Yeah, a little okay, bit so of a, the you, chalk pick. Well, no, but you're right. But there's there's really nothing else uh, in here unless you're looking at maybe like Bruce Block. Yeah. Uh, is is uh, Donald Braswell the one that you want to see the most again? In in this episode, yes. All there right. was really nothing in this episode. I mean, it was there was a lot of misses. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, I mean, I I really like Bruce Block. I mean, I I I felt bad for him in in season two. I want to see him redeem himself, but the bed of nails trick is just it's it's nothing spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, the act I want to see the most. It's probably uh, MMTWGR. <laughs> Dan and Kim. Uh, Dan and Kim, or uh, Music Makes the yeah. World Go Round. I, so many wonderful names that they could have. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I would actually but, like to see them like get a really fair shake, because I feel like uh, yeah. you add a little bit of comedy, and you know you add that to their you know abilities on the accordions. This, that could be a really, really fun act. Um, yeah. Bruce Block is probably uh i'm I'm curious about his range the most uh but the golden buzzer if i was going to hand out a golden buzzer probably goes to donald braswell the second yeah so uh boy anything else we need to talk about before we put a bow on this one cody no i think this is really good we kind of just truck you know moved through this one pretty quickly we've got two more auditions episodes uh season uh, episode seven we're gonna get a MySpace audition. Yeah. Curious about that one. Um, I'll have to see if uh, if MySpace is even up and running these days. It's uh, is it de- is it dead? Is it defunct? No, it's it's actually owned. By, I think it's owned by Justin Timberlake these days. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I think it's mainly focused on artists. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's a place for for artists to to share their their works. Yep. All right. I think that's what they're they're focusing on these days. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's more of a punchline than it is anything else, it, it feels like. but uh, Right. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it, it'll be interesting to to visit that in uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, in other uh, AGT time news, I guess uh, we'll be um, we've got a uh, rewatchables coming up. You told us. Yep. Yeah, commenter and I are once auditions are over. Uh, commenter and I are going to get together and we're going to do a rewatchable. Uh, we know who we're going to do. We're just not ready to announce it yet. Okay. But, uh, uh, we got that set up. We're trying to set up a interview with a uh, an act from America's Got Talent. We yep. are, uh, and we're close to getting that one that one squared away. Uh, what else we got going? We've got AGT Extreme coming up sometime this winter. Uh, we're expecting before the Olympics. Uh, yeah, my 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 guess is in January because the Olympics are in February, and surely they wouldn't take a break from Extreme to do the Olympics. Yeah, so. it, it'd be weird to do like a couple weeks of Extreme, yeah. the Olympics, yeah. and then a couple weeks of Extreme. Um, right, but I wouldn't put it past them. You just never know. You know they've AGT got time does weird to things, fill, so. and AGT <laughs> might fill it. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll try and finish up season three before season seventeen is upon us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we're gonna be here. We got lots of content. We got lots of things planned out. Uh we're kind of planned almost to Christmas and then, you know, if if Extreme kicks off in January. So we're we're good all the way until about February uh, of content scheduled. So keep listening, stay subscribed. Um we're, oh, did you have your uh, podcast review of the oh, week? Oh no, let me uh, let me look one. Yeah, up we didn't we didn't get to that we didn't get to that at the beginning. Uh, if you don't have one, I think I may may have one. Let me see here. Let's go with um. Uh, you know, this isn't really a, a, a. I usually like to pick one that's a little bit more obscure, but uh, Business Wars Daily. Uh, there's there's business wars and then there's business wars daily and business wars daily is usually just a, a four or five minute little like here's what's here's an interesting story from the business world and uh, it's it's really succinct it it tells you a lot in in the four or five minutes that's you know kind of useful and then uh, it usually ends with some kind of pun on. Uh, what they were talking about that particular day. <laughs> so it's okay. It, it's a nice short little uh, current events um, podcast that you don't you don't get that particular current event in other podcasts that you might be subscribed to. So uh, I will say uh, Business Wars Daily is is a really good follow. Doesn't take a lot of time, but it is it's it's worth worth the time that you give it, which <laughs> is. Is only a few minutes, which I can't say about this podcast. Yeah. Well, this one we're going to be under an hour on this one today. Yeah, uh, tonight first Jay, time so, in maybe a uh, long time a, that we've been under an hour. For, first time in a long time, yeah. So it'll be real good. Uh, so that leads us into hey, we're, you know we're we're still looking for those reviews. Uh, I don't have my uh, phone with me right now. I was going to look see if we had any uh, new reviews, but uh, you know leave, leave us a review because Jay leaves reviews. We would appreciate it if you would leave us a review. Uh, I do. Any, anything else? Anything else before we sign off, Jay? <laughs> Same thing. I say. You, you know what? It, I, we'll, we'll just step on the brakes real quick. Uh, sure. There's yep. one podcast yep. that I listen to. It's uh, uh, True Crime Garage, and uh, he always signs off by telling folks, "Don't litter." And uh, in they they had a like you know listener questions episode. And uh, somebody asked him, "Why do you why do you always tell us not to litter at the end of the episodes?" It's like, because you know, jerks are people who litter. Don't be like that. Like that's that's just a stupid mean <laughs> thing to do. Uh, and so, at the end of our episodes, uh, when I when I request when I tell you all to be safe, uh, I really do mean you know be safe and and make good choices out there. Don't text and drive. Don't uh, you know put yourself in danger unnecessarily. Uh, when you're in crowded places, wear a mask, even if you're vaccinated. Uh, a lot of people are coming up with, you know, breakthrough kind of uh, uh, infections. So, you know, I, I really do mean it. Be safe out there. Um, if you don't have your health, you don't have much. So uh, do what you can to stay healthy. Yeah, good. That's uh, some real good advice. You know, just in general, just be safe, you know, whether it's, you know, not just health, but uh in, in other manners, just, you know, 
be mindful of, of other things. Um, real quick before we sign off, I, I was thinking of something that I kind of want to mention, uh, Jay. So my wife and I watched, uh, this, uh, series on, on Hulu called Only Murders in the Building. Are okay. you familiar with this? No. So it's, it's a Hulu series. It has Steve Martin, oh. Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. Oh, you know what? I did hear about it. Okay. Yes. Uh, yep. I might have to look this one up, but tell me more. Yes. So it's, 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 it, they're, they're trying to solve a murder that happened in the building, but they also are doing a podcast at the same time. It's kind of, it's very meta. So like they're doing a podcast, but also it feels like that the show itself is also a podcast. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's like multi-level podcasting of true crime you were talking about true crime a moment ago true crime solving murders but they only solve murders that happen in their building oh geez can i <laughs> so, can i listen to a podcast about only murders in the building or is it uh it's 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 a tv show so i looked that up as well i looked it up to see if there is a podcast out there and the only ones i was able to find were people that you know reviewed it like we do america's okay. got talent and the official one that talks about like behind the scenes type stuff. Okay. So right. there's not a podcast that there's tells not like a, the story. a companion to the to correct. The okay. C correct. Yeah. So that'd be kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Boy. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's <laughs> uh, we're, we're we're down to just chatting at this point. And uh, yeah, if you if this is what you tune in for, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, let's let's. Uh, Let's put a bow on this one. We'll come back next week with auditions week six and then auditions week seven uh, before we uh, kind of shift gears before the Vegas rounds. So uh, yeah. I do mean it. Everybody stay safe out there and uh, we, we do appreciate you. Have a good night. Bye.